Hello, my internet friends. Word of warning, if you're using a distribution of Ubuntu and you upgrade to the latest release as of April 30th, 2022, be very cautious on the extensions that you rely on because I have a few extensions that are not compatible, which means this video will be less exciting because I won't be able to draw as much as I would like to. But with that out of the way, the show must go on. So this level is level 21 and it is called shop. And in this level, shop is specifically asking for us to get the item back from the shop less, for what, uh, less than the price it's asked for originally. Some things that might help is shop expects to be used from buyer understanding restrictions of view functions. So those are our tips. That's the challenge is basically to get the price or to get the item from the shop that's less than the price that it's asked for, which you can see in the uh, code here, it's 100. So uh, that's the challenge. And I don't have many notes today because the solution that I came across is pretty straightforward and simple. Um, but there are other solutions for older variants of this challenge that are more complex and convoluted. So I'll briefly skim those so you can kind of understand of kind of what those are and how the challenge kind of changed over time. And uh, yeah, so with that being stated, uh, like I said, I'm a little limited and I can't draw as much as I would like. So we have our target code here, which we'll review in a second. But I did think about, I do want to draw for you. So we are going to, we're going to wing this and we're going to use uh, a drawing app with a screenshot. And hopefully this is still as useful as the previous challenges. So in our target code, we have uh, our compiler version. So we're going to basically do this through 6.0 and we have a uh, floating point. Remember, this should be static when in production. Uh, we have an interface. So an interface is basically, um, you can consider it as like a library or an extension of a certain type of function. And inside of the interface, there shouldn't be any state variables. There shouldn't be any uh, storage, uh, any functions that have actual implementations of the function. It's all just really an empty shell that is then run through other uh, contracts. And we can see here that empty shell contains one function, which is price. And it's basically, uh, and this is common for most interfaces where it's uh, gonna be an external function, kind of mandatory. And it's gonna return a uint, and this is a view function. And this is called buyer. Now down here we have our contract, so this is where the magic happens. So in our contract for our target, it's called shop, and then here they have a state variable, like I stated earlier, that sets this to 100. So the price is 100, and we wanna basically get this back for less than the price. We wanna get a discount. And here we have another state variable, which is a Boolean is sold. And then below this is this is the function that we care about. And these are comments that I've added through the notes and the things that I've read just to kind of prompt me of what I want to explain to you. So in this function, it's a function called buy, which is public. We have a, uh, an extension of the interface. So we can, we can see the interface here is being called and placed onto this variable. So we're going to say the sender of the buyer uh, is going to be placed here inside of buyer. So we can then call methods specifically price within that interface. I'm going to undo some of this stuff so it's not as uh, yellow on the screen. Okay, so we're down here. Where are we? Are? Here, buy. So inside of this if condition, this is really what we're going to manipulate and exploit. And here you can see the most important piece is that price here is being called twice. First, it's going to be called in this if statement of a conditional. So we're going to say if the price provided is greater than or equal to the price that's expected, which is 100, and the is sold boolean is false, then we'll let you continue and go through. And as, as you go through, it's gonna manipulate that is sold. So it's gonna change is sold to true from false. And then it's gonna take the price that the buyer provided and it's gonna update the price variable to whatever that price is here. So with this being stated, we can see that price is being called twice. And that's what we're gonna manipulate here. We're gonna use that, that two calls to first path pass this conditional and then we're gonna provide the price we wanna provide that we want to um, make sure is below 100. So that is our um, target contract. Now, with that being stated, we have some notes here and some solutions. So we've talked about the code, some of the resources I came across. So the first one I came across is one that we've discussed previously and actually have a bunch open here already. So let's close everything and start from scratch. All right. This is the first solution I came across, which is referring to the older variant of the challenge. And when I say older variant, you can see in the screenshot they provided, um, I wish I could draw, but I can't. Uh, here, 
there is a mention of gas. So specifically the price is calling and, and limiting the amount of gas that can be used for this transaction. And that comes into play later on because both this solution and the other more complex solution I'll provide are all skimmed through is uh, them manipulating assembly inline. So inline assembly and their uh, attacker contract to ensure that when they do manipulate this contract, they're doing it below a certain threshold. And if we go down a bit further, they'll do a lot of good explanations here. So it's something definitely you should read through, even though it's not necessarily prevalent for this contract, because if we look at this one, uh, this one here, you can see is talking about gas. If we look at ours here, you can see there is no discussion of gas. They've removed that for this new variant of the challenge. Um, and down here, you can see this is their solution, which I think they've linked here. So we can just go straight to that. Yeah, so we can see their contract here. So this is their attack contract and they've actually included inline assembly to um, ensure that they're providing back something that meets that gas threshold. So that's one of the first solutions that I came across. The next one I came across was another author that we've seen previously in other challenges that takes uh, a similar approach to the uh, first solution, but they actually extend the assembly piece and they do a lot more explanation within the assembly, specifically why they've chosen certain calls and they actually do more assembly within their uh, attack contract. So this is definitely a good one to read through just due to the fact that it's uh, new to us. It's a, it's a new form of understanding how we can manipulate certain contracts. They talk through the gas of calls. They specifically state here why you can't use storage. You're gonna have to use memory instead of storage because it's uh, less uh, less gas and that's the thing that we need to defeat inside of this old challenge um, down here they specifically break down the static call which is the one that they use for this and i really like the way that they've actually broken out um, what inputs go into the static call and the output that's expected and they specifically walk you through every single step of how you can derive those inputs because a lot of those inputs are going to be hashed or hexed values of the functions you want to call there's specific locations you want to call and input data and all that stuff so this is a, is a solid explanation of understanding how um, how you can do this so that's another good one you should check out just to understand um, this one here I don't remember let's see so this explanation I would say is and eh, because I don't remember it so we're just gonna skip that one and actually before I go to the next one there's a there's a link here I'll link in the the uh, YouTube description as well that actually shows you when they changed this so I think it was 2019 when they edited the challenge or maybe a little bit afterwards, but here you can state they're they're kind of, they're having a conversation within GitHub talking through specifically why they might want to consider changing um, the challenge due to the fact that the gas limitations have changed over time, and that's a constant uh, thing that's happening within Ethereum is that the gas usage for certain opcodes is adjusting over time, um, and that's something that we'll just have to deal with uh, both us playing the CTF and also another big issue for layer twos that are rolling up either optimism, ZK sync and things like that. They have to consider and contemplate how those changes will in impact um, the fees they charge their users and how they do that kind of stuff. So um, that's an interesting kind of just general thing to think about. But like I said, this is the approach we're going to use here. So the R1 Roga and here they've, uh, they have a really straightforward explanation, um, very concise and succinct and to the point and the solution is super simple. Um, so this is another good one, but like I said, this is an updated version, so they're not necessarily focusing so much on the gas. They do focus on it a bit, but it's outdated, like I said, for the challenge. So that's the solution we're going to use. Um, below here are some additional notes. So I've talked through this, um, called this out already, and we'll explain that in a second. So this is the target, which we've already talked through, so we can close that. And this here is going to be our attack code. So this is our attack contract that we're going to use within Remix to actually solve this challenge. So for usual, we have the compiler here. Um, remember that when doing things in production, don't use floating point, make it static. Uh, our, here's our attacker contract. So what we're here, what we're doing here is we're actually going to inherit the interface that's being called out in our target so we can use it, uh, use the methods with inside of that. So we're going to inherit it here. Um, we're actually going to instantiate the target contract uh, through here. So we're going to set up a um, variable for that to be instantiated within. We have our contract or a constructor here that's going to do the instantiation. So we're going to say, okay, specifically, this is the address we want to target. And we're going to take that address and put it inside of this variable so we can actually use it. Later on, we have two functions. So we have buy and price. Um, buy is basically calling the target's contract buy so we can then manipulate the price. And then our function one here is the uh, price itself. So this is where the magic is going to happen. So we have 
a price function. It's a public one, so we can view it, and it's a view function, so we can interact with it. Uh, override returns uh, a uint, and the override specifically is referring to inside of the buyer interface. Remember, there was a price in there, and in that price, it was uh, a view external, and I think it was virtual. And if it wasn't virtual within interfaces, they're inherently uh, there's a, there's a, the ability to override those interfaces, and it allows you to basically um, utilize that method in the fashion you would like to. Hope that makes sense. Um, so, anyways, there's uh, the function kind of logic here. So we're going to basically return a few things, and the the important point I wanted to point out here that I've called out in the um, in the notes that I provided, and let's undo all this stuff so I can jump back to that really quick. So if we jump back here, there's two links I provided here to explain what we were looking at here because this seems somewhat convoluted at first, right? And we can actually bring it up here as well. So uh, make it bigger. We can see that this kind of looks strange with the question mark and the colon and all that stuff, understanding kind of what that is. Well, that what that is is it's a, it's a conditional operator, uh, sometimes called a ternary, ternary operator. It's used in JavaScript and a few other languages. So I've linked the JavaScript explanation as well as this uh, in the docs as well. You can see down here, they have the ternary operator called out, especially kind of what that means. So if this, this kind of makes sense if you understand what you're looking at. So it's basically saying if this condition um, equals true, then return the true value. If it's false, then return the false value. And the explanation here is just similar to that, uh, maybe a little bit more in depth and a little help, more helpful. Um, but in, in kind of, uh, I guess in conclusion, um, that's what's happening here. Where we're basically saying that um, if sold equals true, then return sold zero, which is the goal that we want to return something that's lower than 100. Or if sold equals false, then we want to return 100 so we can pass the first gate. Because remember, in the um, in the challenge, there's a gate there where it basically states that uh, you know if um, if if the price that's provided is greater than or equal to uh, 100, then and it's false, then continue. And that's what's passing here because when you first hit that that uh, that contract, it's basically going to most it's going to hit this 100, right? It's going to come back and say that this is actually false. So if that's false, then do this one, and then it, then we're going to hit it again. And then it's going to say, if this is true, then we're going to return this one here. That'll be the second step. Hope that's uh, hope that makes sense. With that being stated, here we have uh, a compiled version. Uh, so we've saved this. We compiled it. No errors, which is great. So now we're going to select the attack. We're going to go back to our uh, instance here. We're going to get the address. Uh, contract address. And we can see this is our level address. So if we copy that and we put it into a remix and we employ it and make sure that it's set to inject web three. All right, so we can see this is run and we can see if I check the price now, you can see it's set to hundred, right? So that means that we've run this price and we can see that it's set to hundred. That's the address we're going to. So now we're going to call by and when we call by, we're, uh, we're going to first send our hundred because it's false, and then we're gonna send our zero when it's true when it calls price twice. So this is completed. So if you check price again, you can see now it's zero. So we've we've achieved what we wanted to because we've actually gotten back the item from the shop below the asking price. So if we submit the instance, in theory, this will work, and we'll all be satisfactory. And there you go. Challenge solved. You can see this is level completed. Uh, contracts can manipulate data seen by other contracts in a way that they want. They want. Um, it's unsafe to change the state based on external and untrusted contracts logic. And that is referring to the inheritance in the interface. And that's something that you would see a lot in the notes and the links that are provided in those notes as well. So with that being stated, we are on to the next one, which is DEX, and we're almost done. I'm so excited that we're almost done. I'll see you in the next level.